let it upset you, Jim. We're used to it. It happens all the time. I told them to abstain. Well, it's well known that in the British Foreign Office, an instruction from the Prime Minister becomes a request from the Foreign Secretary, then a recommendation from the Minister of State, and finally just a suggestion to the Ambassador, if it ever gets that far. Thank you. Lachaim. Cheers. Well, Jim, what are you going to do about St. George's? You know about that? <laughs> Obviously. Not a serious problem, is it? Isn't it? Well, your information must be better than mine. So that mine comes from the Foreign Office. <laughs> Israeli intelligence says that East Yemen are going to invade St. George's Island within the next few days. What? So that's the connection. Now, your Foreign Office have agreed with East Yemen uh, that they'll make strong diplomatic representations but do nothing. In return, the Yemenis will let you keep your airport contract after they're taken over. There'll be uproar. But that's only the start. I happen to know from our ambassador in Washington that the Americans are going to support the present government of St. George's. In the UN? No, in battle on St. George's Island. They'll send in an airborne division backed up by the Seventh Fleet. The Americans invading a Commonwealth country? <laughs> the palace will hit the roof. <laughs> and I shall look ridiculous. Why didn't the Americans tell me? They don't trust you. Why not? <laughs> because you trust the Foreign Office. Oh, I see. <laughs> what can I do about it? Well, Jim, you have an airborne battalion on standby in Germany that is not now needed for the NATO exercise. How do you know? I know. <laughs> now, if you were to send it to St. George's Island, it would frighten off East Yemen. They'd never dare invade. Of course, it's not for the Israeli ambassador to advise the British Prime Minister. And he wouldn't take your advice anyway. <laughs> Get me the Foreign Secretary and then the Defence Secretary, please. I wonder the Foreign Office didn't cover themselves. Maybe they did. They gave me several boxes tonight. I've been through them all except this one. I wonder if this could be it. Northern Indian Ocean Situation Report. It's 138 pages. It must be it. <laughs> Hello. Yes, Roddy. I want the President of St George's Island to extend an invitation to Britain to send an airborne battalion on a goodwill visit. No, no, just a friendly gesture. Goodwill. Yes, at once, please. Thank you. You seem to think that 800 fully armed paratroopers was an awful lot. Says on a goodwill visit. <laughs> no, it's just an awful lot of goodwill. <laughs> oh, yes, Paul, you know you have an airborne battalion on standby in Germany. Yeah. Never mind how I know. Well, since it's not being used, I want them to fly straight off to St. George's Island. Uh, sort of between Africa and India. <laughs> a goodwill visit. You're just showing the flag. They have been invited. Yes, leave in six hours. Yes, an instant goodwill visit. <laughs> Take your press office to announce it at once. No, 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 no. Leave me out of it. A routine visit. All right? A routine surprise visit. <laughs> well, say they were invited earlier, but the NATO exercise got in the way. And now they're not needed. They're going anyway. Well, all right. Nobody knows it's not true. Press statements aren't delivered under oath. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be off at midnight. <laughs> <laughs>